So the authorization, as I mentioned, employees have to first consent in order to give the to allow the company to run a report. The disclosure. So again, I think this is another way where companies really fall down on the job. And I know some attorneys who practice in this area. They make a business of suing various employers about um, not complying with FICRA. And I think a lot of times it's not necessarily for the money involved as much as it is to effectuate change on behalf of especially plaintiffs' side of employment law. Um, so the disclosure given to applicants has to be clear and conspicuous. It has to be given in writing. It has to be in a document that, dis that consists solely of the disclosure. So it can't be involved in a whole bunch of a packet of other documents. It has to be a standalone document that's given to the person in a standalone format. And it has to be get disclosed to the person before the, conduct the background check is conducted. So again, common violations, the disclosure is included in a packet of other documents, it includes extraneous information. Um, and so, you know, again, if you have these issues, it might be good to talk to an employment lawyer. So pre-adverse action requirements. Before taking the adverse action, such as not hiring, firing, whatever it may be, not promoting, um, the employers have to furnish a copy of the report. People are entitled to a copy of the report that discloses their background so that they understand what's in it and have a meaningful opportunity to either dispute it or correct information that's there. So, and there has to be a, an, a written description of consumers' rights. Consumers have to be given a piece of information talking about what to do if their background check report is not correct, their options in that case. So what do employers do with this information? Um, I put up a sample of a report. What's troubling sometimes, at least to me, somebody who deals with the client aspect side of things, the, the prospective employees, um, is that a lot of times the company, again, in my example of Target or Walmart, and I'm hiring First Advantage. First Advantage will give Target or Walmart a report that basically just says, does not meet company standards. A lot of times the company asking for the information is kept in the dark about what in particular on someone's background check disqualified them from employment. So Target will say, we don't want any person who has a felony offense within the last five years. We don't want somebody who has a prior theft offense, et cetera, et cetera. Here are our parameters. And when First Advantage or Sterling Group or somebody gives the report, they will essentially say, this person doesn't meet company standards. I find that to be troubling somewhat because the HR director is often then the person, the HR director for Target or Walmart, is often the person contacting the applicant and saying, I'm sorry you don't meet our standards. And so then the question is always, well, why not? I mean, what, what has come up that has prohibited me? And of course, sometimes they know, sometimes they don't. Um, but that HR director sometimes is in a difficult position of saying, I, I don't know. It's just summarily denied. You, you don't qualify for employment. I really encourage people in that situation to obtain a copy of their report from the data harvesting company themselves. They have the right to do that, and it's much like any report that's being given, in credit report, anything, there can and have been mistakes made on these reports. And so it's a very good idea, instead of sort of throwing your hands up and saying, okay, forget it, I'll just go find something else, or I'll just give up, to actually pursue taking a look at that report and seeing what information has been reported. There's lots of things in there where perhaps non-criminal offenses are being reported as criminal, and that's the, the cutoff that a company has given. Um, there's lots of instances where information is incorrect, incomplete, for example, and so it's a good idea to really take a look at these reports and see if something can be done to ensure their accuracy. Because again, FICRA, the Fair Credit Report, Reporting Act, mandates that the information be corrected or that it be at least up to date, um, and so the information there, it's oftentimes beneficial for consumers to pursue those rights that they have. So accuracy. Uh, here's the statute that talks about there has to be maximum po possible accuracy. Issues that come up are files not being up to date. Um, mixing of files where you have perhaps two John Smiths and some other John Smiths information is being reported along with that person's information. It's very similar to a credit report. I'm, I myself have had something on my credit report that did not belong to me and there was a mixing of files that can really adversely affect someone and their prospects. So reporting prohibited information. Um, FICRA actually, the federal statutes actually talk about some restrictions of data harvesters in reporting certain types of information. 
So, for example, traffic citations, non-criminal offenses. Again, sometimes I see these being reported as criminal offenses. Um, it sometimes involves digging up paperwork from the court to, in fact, show that a particular disposition of a case, a certain level of offense, is not a criminal offense. But that information should not be reported. Criminal charges that don't result in a conviction, that are older than seven years. Here we do have a timeline involved. It's a criminal charge that doesn't result in a conviction and it's more than seven years old. FICRA regulates the data harvesting reporting of that information and that it should, be not, it should not be on that report. Failing to note that an offense has been expunged or sealed. Here's where things get a little bit dicey. Um, so FICRA does not mandate that data harvesters remove the information if it's been expunged. Most often you'd have to look to a state law in order to have more teeth in that or to enforce that. FICRA, though, mandates that the data harvesting company at least must report that the offense has been expunged. It's absolutely accurate to say that it has been expunged or sealed, and so the data harvesting companies need to include that information if they are going to report that. So should I disclose it on my job application? As I've mentioned, you know, it's never 100% it's never guarantee that an employer or someone conducting a, some sort of check on someone will not find out about the offense. Um, you know, guessing whether the employer does a background check is often very dangerous. Um, not all employers that provide disclosures, they're in violation of FICRA when they do this. Um, a lot of applicants, frankly, just go through the process and miss the disclosure or don't understand exactly what it is they're being told or disclosed. Um, employers sometimes will provide the disclosure after the application. Uh, many employers integrate their applications with the criminal background check um, and you know, disqualify applicants who fail to disclose an, an offense, they, so the applicant doesn't tell them about it, they later find out about it, and now it would have not have been a problem had you just told the employer, the fact that you left it off is the disqualifying incident itself. Um, so expunged convictions, as I mentioned, are really tricky because uh, technically under the Fair Credit Reporting Act they can still be reported if the data harvesting company knows about it. Um, it's a total judgment call. It's hard to advise clients in situations whether they should report something or not. You know, and as I mentioned sometimes too, the legal status of having gone through some type of expungement is, is difficult because it may not necessarily reverse a conviction, but it may just sort of hide the records. Um, so sometimes I'll work with clients you know, and I'll advise them. Um, you know, if you know that something is going to come up, it's obviously better, in my opinion, to disclose it. If you know it's not going to come up, you might want to give yourself a, a fighting chance. I mean, if somebody has gone through an expungement, that's the purpose, is to not have it come up on a background check. And I tell clients sometimes that if they don't disclose it, they could sort of explain it at a later date by saying, I did not disclose this because it had been expunged, and that's my justification for not initially disclosing it. Sometimes employers are, are understanding of that, and sometimes they're not. It has to be on a case-by-case -case basis. So preempting a background check. Um, here's where we get into working with the data harvesting companies and trying to um, sort of massage or manipulate a little bit about what they are reporting to their, their people that are conducting background checks or asking for this information. So credit reporting agencies um, usually can and will report whatever they find. We talked about the fact that their allegiance is to the company hiring them. But they might be convinced not to on a case-by-case -case basis. There's a couple tactics for dealing with this. Um, one is that I will send a letter. I have a template letter. I'm happy to share it with people if they want to email me. My email's on the end of this presentation. Um, but essentially, it's a letter saying to the credit reporting agency, you are put on notice that this particular offense has been expunged, and you're, we are asking you not to report it. Um, if there are state statutes that govern the regulation of that information as there are in Minnesota, I have a very good legal position. I can essentially say, you are now on notice, and if you knowingly report this information, my client will have a cause of action to recover any damages. That, I, in my experience, the data harvesting companies are generally pretty good about this. They don't mess around with it. In my experience, the times when they're reporting information they shouldn't, it's because they haven't figured out that it's been expunged. It either fell through the cracks or something has happened where they did not realize that the offense had been expunged. Um, there is also, I put a website down at the bottom here, nationalexpungementclearinghouse.org. It's sort of like a national registry, a do not call list, so to speak, that a person can go and register their information saying that they've had a particular offense expunged and these data harvesting companies are supposed to uh, check this database to ensure that they're not reporting information that has been expunged. Um, 
there's a whole bunch of issues con concerning the National Expungement Clearinghouse in the sense that, you know, many clients I talk to are like, I got this expunged, I'm trying to put the genie back in the bottle, why do I want to create yet another repository of this information? I, I don't disagree with that reasoning. A lot of times I'm like, you know, I'll leave it up to you as to whether you want to register your information with them. Some clients do, some clients do not. The other thing is, is so you've registered your information with the Expungement Clearinghouse. I mean, you're running a risk sometimes that the data harvesting company checking that database, they may not have known about the original incident to begin with, and now they are aware of it. If your state statutes are particularly weak and do not go beyond what FICRA offers in protections, I don't know that I would ever recommend going on and registering your information with the National Expungement Clearinghouse. You've essentially now given that information to the data harvesting company and again, if your state regulations are not stronger than FICRA, the data harvesting company can certainly report that information. And again, sometimes it's to their advantage to do so.